It's Monday, February 15th, 2016, about 2.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to, oh, well, these are um, medical files. I think those are my medical files and info as well. I had to, uh, yeah, the... So we're going to go to this one, which, um, this is not paper journaling, but back in the day, um, this thing used to happen called snail mail. And actually I, I've seen in the journaling community that people are a uh, pen palling. Now I, the, there's postcards in like, there's a postcard wall in the living room. It's, it's pretty big. Um, and I have some still away. I used to trade and write, write postcards a lot. Um, like, wall-to-wall -wall scrawl is what I called it. So I took quite a lot of writing. Uh, I did a lot of writing. But before that, there were the days of sending letters back and forth. And when I moved away from my hometown to live on a pig farm in the middle of nowhere, like, we rented the house... The farmhouse. Um, I became pen pals with people that I knew from here. And then, um, yeah. So, I have a lot of these letters from days gone by. And um, I put them in folders with names of the people. Though there's other names that have nothing to do with it. Because the folders are from other places. I've got folders that were written... Folders that, I mean, letters that were written, letters that were typed because computers and such were coming in. But, oh, some beautiful letters from people that I, 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 I you know, I don't know anymore. Um, yeah, some of these folders are from my first uh, boyfriend who was in the military. So, you know, he took a lot of stuff. People were worried with me. Worried about me. Who is that? Oh, and... Yeah, I know. It's very curious. There's just quite a smell. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so see, I put their name actually on the front of the folder. So, this is the name of somebody I met who wrote me quite a while. He, he was a libertarian. I, I see that like it's... Yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, well, there's just a whole bunch of people from the past who... I don't know if they exist anymore. I think this was my first boyfriend. Or one of them or something. Nothing that happened. Just people wrote. You know, we wrote each other letters. And, uh... Oh, see, I speak to this girl, woman... Um, she doesn't have that last name anymore. I remember because she became, uh, she was the redhead girl that <laughs> took my, she didn't know that she was, but took my first kiss boyfriend away that I worked with in the factory. And, uh, she ended up, um, she and I are in touch now through WhatsApp <laughs> and Skype. Um, and she lives in Morocco now. Uh, so life. We were good friends, but these are letters from when we were, when we were young, when I lived in the apartment building. And then these are all letters from one person. Uh, these are, sorry about that rope. I call them, what, what did I call them? Letters from Shadow File. Yeah, Shadow's not what she would go by now. But in the early, very early days from high school, I have them to each year and what's saddest about it is that it's my fault that it ended and it's my fault that uh that this kind of correspondence didn't continue for the rest of our days because it could have probably uh prolific writing <laughs> you know um we and and the style of writing to, um, the style of writing of, um, 
going regard and then you would like quote what you wanted to write reply to was definitely a big part of it. But yeah, these went back to when we had a school strike. The teachers were on strike. So we started writing then, but then we started picking up again after I lived on my own in 95. I moved out when I was 17 because I already had a full-time job at 16. So, well, that wasn't, wasn't that, that wasn't just the reason, but we became much deeper pen pals then. And then we wrote again in later years and really picked up um, throughout the years. And uh, I'll always... I get torn between, should I send these letters to her family, um, or should I just keep them? I have no idea, because I didn't, I didn't get my letters back. Maybe she did what I did with my first love's letters. My first love, like, my first guy, guy, the one with the stole military folders, um, he, um, and I wrote very romantic letters to each other, and he had the most gorgeous penmanship. But he, um, I had to burn the letters, uh, you know, burning the letters, as Sylvia Plath had mentioned. I did it, um, when I moved back to my hometown, uh, I was trying to move on and, um, found that that was the way to do it. There's some from, like, some classmates that I wasn't close to before I moved away, but then came closer to. Some people I wrote when I was much younger. Just, it's so dusty, though. I, like, I feel like I should, um... Anyway, does anybody else have a trouble like that? Um, yeah, I... I think that th these are a conundrum, because... Um... Well, th you remember passing notes in class? For those of us who are older, we used to pass notes in class, write little notes. I'm sure people still do anyway. Um, I had a beautiful little box that I kept of all these little notes that would be written back and forth between people, uh, myself obviously included. And then um, I got rid of them later on in the years. I think I was in my 20s when I did it, and I regret that because those were those were so interesting. So these are something that will be a bit more difficult to just toss away. Um, and I do now that I'm so many years past the um, first X. Sorry about that hitting the thing. The first X. I do regret burning his letters because they were a part of. Um, my life at that time in a capsule and they were gorgeous handwriting and also there was a lot of I don't know it might be interesting to read when I'm really old I don't, I don't know but at the same time I can't even bring myself to read these letters because of you know pain associated with loss so I I don't know what the what what keeping these are for but then again I've got um all my cards, birthday cards, uh, every kind of card that we used to get, um, I've got them in a box somewhere, as well as because I've got that box sealed up from moving, I've got cards being kept in a few bags that have to do with snail mail. I mean, what's the value of keeping all that stuff? What does anybody else have something like this? Maybe not in a filing cabinet. I didn't. I didn't used to keep these in a filing cabinet. Um, what do you? What do you keep them for? What do you do with it? Like, um, what do you do with it later? What do you think of it? Um, hoarding, <laughs> or is there value to it? Uh, as in, I mean, you don't want to exploit the writer the person who wrote you who's obviously quite different now that they're older or maybe the same you don't know but it's not your business i mean what do you do with it it's like with our paper journals and the idea of what will happen afterward with our journals if we haven't stipulated it in a will or whether or not those things will be followed what about letters people have sent you 
from your childhood or love letters that you did not burn. <laughs> um, what do you guys think about it? Because letters aren't often, uh, letters are very much connected to journaling. I know that a lot of people in the journaling community uh, send snail mail um, because it's a thing. It's a thing that we do. We, we write, so we end up, we write in journals, we write online, we write. So this is a postcard wall. And this one, it doesn't have any postcards on it that hadn't been sent to me for the most part. Um, there's a few that were sent to my, my dad um, that I kept. Or that the one I had sent to my to some relatives but I mean all these were from people I used to write back and forth and a lot of those are from Heather I love those and um, yeah I mean the wall's been up a few years oh and there's beautiful mail like inspiring mail from Carol and I do like the inspiring letters and mail but what do you guys think of this? Like, what do what do we do? Are we just accumulating paper product stuff? I mean, there's a lot of people who repurpose it, um, use it for new things. But how do you do that with personal letters, handwritten letters? I mean, why you could, of course, an artist can do anything with any, any materials, especially something so rich as that. Oh, we've got snow out there, guys. But what are your opinions? What do I do? I mean, those letters are going to disintegrate. Probably it's been about... Yeah, that's what it's like out right now. It's been about... Tw it's been over 20 years for some of those. From Let's say some of them are from when I was... Well, some going back to 95, but many go further. You're talking... Uh, yeah, over 20 years old. So those letters are going to get pretty, uh, there's the roses. Those letters are going to get pretty, um, I don't know, you know? So tell me, tell me, tell me about letters and postcards and cards like, um, uh, Christmas holiday birthday cards. What are your plans? for your collection of cards and letters, let alone your journals, if you want to tell me about what you plan to do with your journals. Um, I mean, letters can be turned into books. Correspondence between people, the complete correspondence of Elizabeth Bishop and Robert Lowell. I mean, the letters home by Sylvia Platt, uh, of, uh, the letters home by her mother, you know, um, People have used letters, the Book of War letters. There's value, oh, post-secret. We all know about Frank Warren's uh, post-secret project. So there's three books of that. This is a book of compiled letters by famous people. So what happens? What, what should we do with our own while we're alive and we have, you know, some say in the matter? Do we have a plan for our collections of letters, postcards, not to mention our journals? And what do you do when it's not letters or cards that you yourself have written? Do you still have a say? Should you have a say? What do you do with it? Bye.